<laughs> okay, welcome back to Rad Linux. We're on an LXQT desktop. I just have a live ISO of uh, Fedora 34 with the LXQT. Cute. LXQt. I always say that wrong. Something that you read things off the internet too much. LXQt desktop. Uh, and I, I want to just do a little video showing uh, kind of how flexible uh, LXQt is and why I love it as a backend so much. It's it really a, it's got a a nice flexible um, uh, you know backend, but it also it's not super complex to use. You don't even really need to use the terminal all that much, if at all. Um, but today what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a big change with just a little bit of work. Um, we're going to show, I'm going to show you how to change the entire window manager, just a few clicks. So, um, the standard LXQt desktop is based around Openbox or not. Yeah. Openbox, which is like a, a, a great window manager. I love Openbox. Um, it's, it's just a lot of like really good flexibility out of a floating window manager. It's a good base, you know, to really build up from. You can add all your wind panels and all that stuff. And it really is nice. It's, you know, you can bend it around a little bit. Um, you can do some fun stuff with it, you know, change things around. Cool. Cool. Uh, and it gives you all the classic things that you like out of a window manager. Uh, things float. You can move from here. You can move them there. It's not particularly. Um, well set up for people who like to use a lot of keyboard stuff. There's no drag to the edges. Anyway, I can move over maybe a workspace or something, but I can't, I can't move it to, to tile to the edge. And, uh, over this pandemic, I've just really gotten into i3. I've had a lot of time to play around with configuration files and just fuck around in general. And I really enjoy working in a tiling window manager. And I really like i3. I like its, its simplicity. Uh, and, Again, its own particular type of uh, extendability, a lot more configuration file based, but I really like that. It's a lot of fun for me. So what I'm going to show you today is how to make that change, how to switch everything over to i3. Um, and so what I'm going to first do is I'm going to install i3. So I am running uh, Fedora, like I said, so I'm running uh Fedora 34 and in Fedora we use the DNS so, or DNF rather uh, we use RPMs and uh, so we're going to only use sudo DNF install if you're using a Debian based distribution you're probably going to use uh, sudo apt so if you're using like Debian Ubuntu Mint Pop you're going to use sudo apt um, and you know it, it, beyond that you're probably you probably should know how to use your own window manager. Um, pack, Pac-Man, I think would be, uh, well, if you're using Arch, I think it would be, you know, pseudo Pac-Man, tac, uh, capital S Y, I think. Um, don't quote me on that. I don't really use, uh, Arch as much, uh, not enough to like really remember what they're doing there because it's a little more complex. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it. I know in here it's i3, search your own window or your own package manager. It might be under i3 WM. Um, it might be under a couple of different things. So just search your package manager for i3. You'll find the package. We're going to install that and all its dependencies. Very easy to do in Linux. And that's why I love it. And so here we are. We have i3. Now I could just log out. Yeah, I want to log out. And I'm going to switch over to this using the session manager here. I'm going to switch over. We're going to go into i3. And look at us. We're in i3. So I'm going to say yes. Oh, I guess it hit it too fast there. Well, that's fine. And um, so now I chose Windows as my super key. And here we are. Uh, I can, you know, LS, we can top, we can, uh, we can you know, um, go to our config files. And let's see, I'm going to go to i3, or I'm going to see, you know, i3. Three, uh, big, and look, I can do whatever I want, you know. Um, check it out. We can switch things around. Uh, you know, we can make it all, all super customizable. I really like to get rid of that shift in there, and I really, you know, I was playing around with uh, Garuda, and they have a uh, an i3 setup, and I don't really like necessarily like, enjoy using someone else's i3 setup, but it does give me ideas. So. 
I like that now. That's now I've added that to my own shit and took that from there. I really like that. Okay, cool. So that's awesome. But what if I want to do something that is, let's say, a little more complex? Now, uh, I'm actually not 100% sure. Ooh, I know there should be something. I don't know if there's a, if there's a firewall front end in here someplace. Um, wait, wait, let's see. Where is it? No. Yeah, let's try DNF Dragora. Now, this is going to try, I think, and ask us, ask us for, um, for the ability to execute using pull kit. So we should have to, I believe, because this is, this is a, a software management tool. It's just like Synaptic. I don't know. I never use it. I, I mostly just use the command line. Um, but I, I believe that this should ask us in a second to, to verify our our user. Uh, oh, you know what? Though it probably actually won't because we are okay. Yeah, well, it's a little bit different because I'm on, I'm on a live ISO, so there is no there isn't the same circumstance. But if I if I was trying to use this from a general i three session. Uh, and I don't have pull kit already set up, it will likely tell you that you just can't do anything here. You can't install anything. Sorry, you can't, you can't log in. No, you can't install anything. Now, okay, so like I said, that's a little bit of a different circumstance because of the fact that we are in, uh, we are not in a standard or standard, you know, install. Um, but that is a problem you run into. You're going to run into the fact, right? There's none of none of our system settings went across. None of, none of that stuff is going to go across. It's a very it's just a fresh thing. You're going to have to link everything yourself. That's kind of the the fun of of uh, i3 is linking everything yourself. But <clears throat> let's say you're new. Let's say you've never really used i3 a lot, and you want to get accustomed to it. You want to you want to start figuring out how to navigate it before you even know what you want out of it. Right, I mean, because that's why I three is about knowing what you want. If you don't know what you want, then you have to figure it out. So let's find another way to use I three. That's going to make things a little bit easier for us. So let's see where again is this session settings? Now LX Qt or Qt makes this so easy. It is so easy. Right here, window manager, open box, i3. There you go. We're all done. I mean, that's amazing, right? Like, it's just really, really sets you up for success. Uh, and so we're going to log out and we're going to say yes. And then we're going to log back into LXQt. And wait a second. That isn't quite right. <laughs> That is not quite right, is it? Because, um, okay, so we still have the desktop. Now if I go to, okay, well now the desktop is gone, right? So the first the first window already has the desktop open. Uh, and uh, we have this panel still. And if you're an i3 user, you will know that this panel is not normal. It doesn't always sit there. Uh, this is the standard panel. Um, Oh, that's so funny. I mean, even if I'm in different workspaces, it only recognizes one workspace over, but it will recognize that. Okay, so that's funny. Um, you could probably change that and like add like infinite desktops or whatever. Uh, but the so so it's not it's not quite the way maybe we want it. It's not really set up the way I, maybe you might imagine it being set up. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna change it up a little bit. Um, if you were Keeping a keen eye on our session settings, you might have seen this, this LXQt models, our modules section. Uh, and this is what this is, does is, is this, it's just kind of like auto start stuff. So these are things that are, that are starting um, at the beginning of every session. But we don't necessarily want all those things. Um, we maybe don't want to have this panel. Maybe, maybe this panel, you know, we, we're going to stick with the traditional i3 status bar. Uh, and the D menu system. So we're gonna, you know, I can, I can, we're gonna use that instead of using this. So we're gonna get rid of the panel. Now you can do the opposite too. You could go into your, your i3 config and you can say, well, maybe I don't like this i3 toolbar. 
or, or the i3 status bar, and we can get rid of that. You can do you can cut that out of your your i3 config, uh, like like I had gone into earlier when I was playing around in the other session, and you can you can remove that. Uh, just just totally get rid of it. You don't even need to have this i3 status bar, or you know, uh, comment it out. I'd recommend commenting things out instead of just totally deleting them because, you know. I, there's just no reason to, you know, you don't, it's, it's a lot easier to remove a, uh, you know, a, a, a pound sign, a bang or a crunch or whatever the, whatever you want to call it. And it's a lot harder to, uh, find that code once you've gotten rid of it. So the other thing that we're going to want to get rid of is maybe, um, we don't like this desktop, right? Cause the desktop is, is really not, it's only in one window. So it's not like it even keeps our, 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 uh, our only in one workspace. So it's not like it keeps a, a consistent background. We can do that in the i3 config. Uh, and that's a fun way to figure out what a config file does and what, how you can, how you can make changes to it. Uh, but. We're gonna get rid of that. Uh, we're gonna get rid of the global keyboard shortcuts too, because uh, as of right now, there are keyboard shortcuts that might uh, oh, that might conflict. So we don't want that. We don't want to do that. So we're gonna get rid of the desktop global keyboard shortcuts. Sorry about knocking that out for a second. Get rid of panels. You know, maybe maybe you want to keep your notification daemon up. Maybe you want to you still want to keep getting notifications, and that's important to you. So we're gonna keep that up. Policy kit handler. That's the important one. Again, that's what allows us to get into things like uh, DNF Dragora and and give it access to root. Uh, and then you know also things like your firewall. So if you're setting up you know your firewall, it's gonna it might ask you again. It's not gonna ask me because of this way this is set up, but it would generally ask you to. <clears throat> to log in uh, and verify your your user before you do that. Now see how see how when I when I make a new window it's, it's still doing the tiling thing and it actually considers the desktop it, its own its own tiled win its own tiled like process or child or whatever. I don't know how they explain all this stuff. Uh, tree. It's its own tree or something. So that's hilarious to me. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna shut that down. Uh, come on. Uh, let's see, and then this is oh, there we go. Because I'd already made that change there. Uh, so yeah, so we want all these things. Maybe we want power management. I don't remember what the runner does. Maybe you want it. Maybe you don't. You'll see. Um, and we're going to. I mean, I can just actually right here now stop that desktop. Right? Okay. I can actually also stop the panel. Cool. And so now you can see it. Now when we log in next time, those things won't actually be there anymore. But now we're back down to a basic i3, but we have all these things in place to make it a usable session. So everything that you wanted, that you would want, that was already existing uh, in the LX uh, Qt um, system, the the all the the um, the uh, like GTK settings and all that stuff. That's all going to be that's all going to come with you, uh, and you're going to not have to be concerned about setting up uh, all your own stuff and, and installing all your own daemons and, and all that stuff to, to, to get your X settings uh, set up and everything. So I really like that. I really like the way that that works. And now here we are again, you know, we're going to go over here and gonna check this and uh, cool, you know, awesome, awesome. And like, like I was saying, it's like, you know, if you want to just get rid of the status bar altogether, you could just comment that out. We're gonna comment that out. We're gonna save it. And we're gonna. We're gonna. Uh, it doesn't want to do it. It doesn't want to reload in place. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now, now it's gone. Now I can. So the, the quick on that was that I hit uh, Super Shift R, and then that that's what uh, reloaded i3 in place. Um, now I'm going to save this again, and we're going to reload it in place, and it's back. What did I do? Oh, <laughs> that probably should have been commented. <laughs> that was the point of that. But um, yeah, so now we're going to restart in place, and there we go. Now we have our i3 status bar back, uh, and we have like a basically, a, basically a, a, a very nice pre-established, pre-setup. Um, now I, I I'm, I'm so used to doing these claw shapes that now the easy stuff make it is even harder. But uh, yeah, but now so now we're in the LX Cute session. We're in the same session, um, 
and <laughs> interesting. <clears throat> and you know, you can you can jump around. You can do lxcute config, and you know, we can we can these all these things will still do something. Whereas if it, these these won't even affect your i three uh, session if you just use the separate session on the beginning and, and that that also is its own set of fun uh but if you're doing that at that point you might as well you probably need to know enough to already be doing your own installs like your own arch install where you're just going to install i3 and use that anyways or your own you know debian install where you really just want to use i3 as the only window manager and you're going to do your own install from scratch for i3 and and do all your own setup I mean, it can be fun. I, I do have a, you know, I do use i3 as a separate session on my on my Ubuntu box because it's not as easy to to just make those kinds of changes. Um, and that's again why I think uh, LXQt is so awesome and so flexible, um, and I really enjoy it. Uh, and I mean, well, hang on, let's actually let's do that one more time because I'm just going to drop a couple of little things in here as well. Uh, Okay, so let's go back to the session settings, I believe. User directories, no, I don't think this is exactly what I'm looking for. Well, you know what? Oh yeah, actually it was the appearance. Yeah, so I mean, you know, the appearance is really nice. You can set, um, you know, your own colors. So I can just be like, well, I want dark mode. So let's make this dark mode. I'm going to make this on myself a nice soft gray because uh, I really don't like that super hard contrast. I'm going to say, okay. Uh, and we're going to say, okay. And we're going to apply. And there we go. Now we got a crazy dark theme and you can change that around as well. You can, uh, you know, maybe this this is a little bit too much for you. So we're gonna we're gonna gray that. Uh, wait, and then we're gonna actually make that a custom color. Okay, and then we're gonna say that. Okay, we're gonna apply that. And oh, geez, Louise. Well, whatever. Either way, you you, you get the gist of what I'm doing here. You know, you can make these changes uh, very easily, very quickly. Uh, you can change your own theme. I. You can tell I very much enjoy a dark theme. Um, that's not going to do as much because most of the LX Cute theme is more focused on things like the panel and stuff. Uh, but if you are using the the, the other setup, uh, then you know this this is really nice. If you if you decided you want to keep that panel, you would like to have the panel, and you like to have you know in i three. But let's do that actually right now. Let's go back in and let's say that I actually prefer to use. Um, the panel. So we're gonna actually start the panel. Come on, come on. Give me my start here. Okay, and we're gonna close that. Okay. Um and cool. And then you know, uh apply that, close that. I'm gonna close this. We're gonna take a little hop into a terminal. I hate this, I hate this so much. So we're actually gonna go to uh Yes, Alacrity. This is, I mean, by far my favorite terminal right now. Um, and I'm going to, oh, yeah, hang on. Uh, oh, oh, I'm going to go down here. What am I doing? Uh, we're going to change this to Alacrity. I probably could have done that better, but whatever. I'm not the best at like traversing the planes of Linux yet. I'm working on it. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, so much better. And actually, well, now I'm going to go back in because I didn't do the other thing that I wanted to do, which is we're just going to get rid of the status bar again, right? So now I can just say get rid of that status bar. And we're gonna reload, and then here you go, right? And and maybe you like that setup, you know? It's like because now you still have all your stuff here, you know? It's everything is still convenient. You can still check it out. Um, 
I love that Falcon is the default browser on this. I mean, the the other option is is cute. I mean, I, it's not in there, but I mean, the other good option is to I believe oh, let's see, DNF install uh, cute. You can auto complete that. Come on, you know what? It, that should just that should do it. That should do it. That should get the job done. I love cute browser, but uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, you have now you have all your things. You know, you can say, oh, well, you know, and this this isn't going to be as useful because it's not going to like bring up your windows and like I don't even know if the like alt tabbing right doesn't it's not going to work because uh, we got rid of that that hot key uh, in the controls. I don't know also if this would even work. Oh, okay, cool. It does. Awesome. So yeah, you can still change that up and um hey quick launch. Uh yeah, you know, there's just like so you can you can do a lot of flexible stuff, you can make a lot of changes uh very quickly, very easily. Um just through the LX cute uh settings uh and session manager and the open box configuration. You can just do a couple quick little things, knock it out, and create like a nice custom session for yourself that has all the, the tools and tweaks and functions that you enjoy, uh, but nothing that you don't. And I mean, let's actually see, let's see what happens if I go over here. If I, if I pop this up, okay, it'll actually bring you back to that first window. Um, now that's super weird because like now I'm in, you know, like this isn't working very well. The indicator isn't working. Configure uh, your desktop switcher. Uh, show only active desktops. I don't know. I don't know. There's got to be a better way to deal with that. But uh, yeah. So I mean, there's different things you can tweak, and there's probably more tweaks you can do, and you know, get it to get it like really the way you like it. But you know, that's a big, that's a big change with just a, a little, a couple, a couple clicks, really. I mean, right. Like ultimately it was just a couple clicks, um, that I, I went through in a more elaborate than necessary way. Uh, but you know, I hope that this is helpful. I hope that you, you find, uh, you find this to be beneficial for you. Oh, come on. Now you want to, you want to act this way. Uh, see now, see, this is, this is the problem where Yeah, okay, right. So So now because I changed this uh it's actually locking my my left super key out. So my left super key doesn't do any of the super moves anymore. And I have to do that with my right super key. So again, you know, this will this will make some changes and there's there are some things that are are going to need a little bit of work or help to um to get your way through, uh, to fight your way through, but still very easy, very flexible, and very little work actually needs to get done in the terminal to do that uh, in the command line. Um, that's just you know up to preference. And again, you can you can alter those types of files just by using uh, a, a graphic editor. So uh, text editor. Let's see. Uh, I don't know actually even if we. Is there not a uh, generic text editor? I guess they expect you to use. Huh. Okay. Well, either way. Oh, geez, Louise. Yeah. So that's a little bit about uh, LX Cute and just one fun thing. And you can do that with any window manager. So if you like Xmonad, if you like. Um, I don't know, whatever else there is out of it out there. If you like a uh, awesome window manager or any of the a number of different things, but you don't want to have to set up a backend for it just to get into it. LX cute is a great, great use of, uh, of your time and energy. And, and you're going to learn a lot using it. And, you know, maybe in a couple of years, maybe in a year, maybe in a few months, you might be so comfortable that you want to go through and do your own big install, you know, where you set up all your stuff yourself and you really, you know, you really have a good concept of what's going on, but, um, you know, you don't have to. And, uh, that's kind of, uh, that's one of the, the benefits of going through a process like this, uh, 
and, and using a, a previously configured back end instead of trying to go through and figure everything out yourself. Uh, I, I, I started figuring out I3 just on a separate session. I didn't understand why I couldn't like change my firewall settings. I didn't understand what was going on. Um, I had all these problems that took me a long time to, to, to iron out just to like figure out how to navigate well. So, um, yeah, so, you know, if you, if you, uh, if you like my videos, don't bother subscribing, whatever, just, you know. <laughs> Yeah, just, you know, just watch them, laugh at them, whatever, whatever you like. But um, thanks for hanging out, and uh, see y'all again in the future.